your boy, it's the end of the decade, um, and I don't have a intro prepared, but another JoJo video, and of course, with many JoJo videos, I'm gonna ramble a lot about a bunch of nothing. So with this one in particular, there's not really much to ramble about, so the intro color panel, um, I'm not sure if this is everywhere, but obviously main of is a plug, and here... We have the JoJo, they literally say, it's supposed to be, I watched X Force's video, it's supposed to be like some kind of flag language uh, that could also indicate to you that, you know, this is supposed to be J, this is supposed to be J, that's O, that's O, and it literally says JoJo, uh, but, you know, anyway, maybe not everybody has a weeb and knows that, I didn't know it either, um, so hey, no fist of weebs, um, so Danish Pursuit Part 5, I thought part four would be the last one out of, out of this arc, but it seems that it's going to go on for a little bit longer. And based on the status of Yasuho and Jojo, uh, Josuke waiting for the head doctor, I'm pretty sure that this isn't the last one of the part, uh, the last part of the arc. So anyway, we have like this cool moment where you see Josuke's changed body now. The, uh, I believe this is the part of his body that got destroyed by the, um, the, uh, the stand of the head doctor. So, like, his eye is pretty much, I guess, gone. I don't see how it's very functional at this moment. He's like these cuts on his, um, on his body. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Josuke, he's beat up. And I think it's pretty much like the first, I think he's the first JoJo. has like, a permanent alteration to his body, like, mid-series. Uh, jo jo Jonathan, no, J Joseph had his towards the end. And, um, anyway, um, so referencing the branch again. Uh, this is gonna get lead us to Yasuho and the part where the, her decision and Josuke's decision kind of went to two different paths. Uh, another close up to his eye. I mean, it is literally embedded into his eye. I don't see how he could possibly look out of that thing. That's pretty messed up, man. That dude was a sniper with the bubbles. Now you can't even see how his left eye is pretty fucked up. Back in the hospital, of course. There's nothing important about this dude. Although he is, in fact, as we find out, the deliverer um, of something to uh, Sir Josuke. Uh, bike high. Joseph wrapping up something. I would assume that it is maybe part of the new Rokakaka, uh, the perfect version that I mean, is it really even perfect? I don't know what makes it much better than the old version, but the perfect version that allowed him to continue surviving as as he has. Um, guys looks over like um, I'm trying to think who who I'd compare him to. Kind of like one of those smugglers that just don't think any questions whatsoever of anything. Uh, so we get this delivery address. He sure is correct. He doesn't know the make of it, so it's definitely some kind of weird. It's like a normal house address, like the the um the mansion from the Higashikatas. I mean that he wouldn't react to that in any kind of way, I would think. But apparently, whatever it is, is so low key that um it kind of just needs to be done, and uh, it's something that he can't even ask questions about. And uh, it's just weird. This is embedded in his eye. He, like he makes no kind of remark about it. It's just in his eyeball, and he's just keeping it moving. Dude, Josuke uh, Higashikata's, he's out there. And as it seems, she is currently in her comatose state where um, the rock pretty much just take over, takes over her brain. I still am of the opinion that the doctors did it knowing that her brain would be out of here and that she wouldn't have to worry. They wouldn't have to worry about her ruining things. Um, I believe that's alluded to as well in the previous chapter, but that's just my premise. So going forward from there, we once again reference this, but it's okay if I'm made to go after him. Um, again, after reading or watching Ed Swartz's video, I don't think this is going to make any more sense until we see exactly what that means. But it does appear that he has every intention on waiting for the head doctor or someone to come back and uh, see the mess that he's made. So I, basically what I get, what I gather is that he's bringing the fight to himself versus going to attack the head doctor and uh we split onto yasuho's arc paisley park transmitting through the uh security cameras at the higashikata estate 
And, uh, yeah, so she, as we, the viewer, know, she is correcting her earlier assumptions about who really has the Rokakaka. But, um, let Josuke and them live in their delusions. Shout out to the main character, Yasuho, for saving the day once again. Uh, I think a really interesting angle that, um, that, that, uh, Ed Sports brought up was that it kind of seems like Araki has, like, abandoned the sense of camaraderie. And even romanticism between uh, Yasuho and um, and Josuke because like they literally are like split apart like pretty much. I mean this is his first time. This is her first time referencing Josuke in a while, but I don't think Josuke's referenced Yasuho in quite a minute. So it's kind of feels like they're not really as a uh, buddy buddy as they were at one point. But yeah, I think you know, not is that min that's not missing Kanji. Uh, but he does, in fact, sense a stand in his presence. And, uh, she flaps him to his butt. His butt phone. I don't know why y'all do it to yourself. Unless you're just fat. Or your jeans are just really tiny. You can't fit in your, your front pocket. But that's not the wave. So, anyway. Uh, Big Bro. Uh, what's his name? Jo is it? It's not Jobin. Uh, Joshu. Joshu leading Paisley into, again, we the viewer know it's where the World Copy Cot is stored at. However, there's nothing, as we can later find out, um, nothing that she can really do as a stand because there's no technology for her to transmit off of. And uh, there's something that's that is alluded to later on in the chapter, which is very integral and, in my beliefs, makes me think that Jobin knew that Yasuho would figure it out at some point. I don't know how, you know, it's sort of, sort of the same way that, you know, eyes and, you know, I, I have my, um, uh, my plan, <laughs> plans like, uh, like centuries later in the, in the, um, timeline, but he just knows, that's basically what this is, Jobin knew that, uh, Yasuo was coming, so anyway, I think this is, this makes me believe, I, I don't think that, um, our guy S Force referenced this too much, but this makes me believe that this is Norisuke that, um, we, I believe this is probably really soon to the Norisuke that will be, I guess, off by, um, uh, Sarugi and, um, Jobin. <laughs> Jobin, excuse me. I think that's what we have here. They all are in pretty poor states, uh, due to Sarugi's state. But, um, I think the Norisuke, I think whatever heals, we, we know that she gets healed, or he gets healed. Whatever heals Sarugi, I think will split. Norisuke away from Jobin and Sarugi and make him start creeping around looking for the new Rokakaka. But I definitely believe that it's a good, good chance that... Here, here's three predictions right now. Yeah, Suho will see Mitsuba and they will find the... Or they will at least try to find the Rokakaka. Um, Norisuke will try to find the Rokakaka and get offed. And then see... I think Jobin will be... The, the the penultimate villain of this arc, or the saga, the, the whole thing. I think he'll be the penultimate villain. Um, that's what I'm figuring. Anyway, as we are here, uh, Yasuho finally finds a situation in which she can, um, jump off Paisley Park. She peeps um the, the Paper Moon King fused Sarugi, who slowly being breaking down by their genetic disease, and. Yeah, I mean, at this point, we start... I, you know, I really didn't know that this stand was um, meshed with technology as it is. I know we've only seen it with technology for the most part. But we've also seen it, like, walk around between um, ports. Uh, like, not, not ports, but um, electric poles and uh, you know, telephone poles, etc., etc. So I also was on the assumption that she could just walk, but those were quicker means of transportation for her. For uh, Paisley Park, but as we see, at least in this instance, I don't know if it's always, but at least in this instance, it seems like there is no way for Paisley Park to get around without technology. So, um, that's interesting. I, I don't know if it's, I feel like it's at least partially like not retconning, but like editing the powers of this stand to fit the situation. Uh, kind of like with Starfinger, there's a lot of times that Starfinger could have been used to pretty much off. Uh, some of Joe Duro's um, opponents, but it just wasn't. I think it's kind of altering the stand a little bit. 
I really don't believe that this stand was meant from the jump to like not be able to transport itself unless it was going through um, technology. But anyway, I'm gonna shut up. We get into the most important part. Uh, Paper Moon King Sarugi is laid out, and Yasuho has tried to do everything she can to talk to her and see what's up. Uh, this thing came and we can barely move his eyes. Uh, hey, I feel bad for calling Sarugi that, but hey. uh, Big Sis Yasuho. Uh, what are you doing in our house? You gotta get out of here right away. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The, she has some breaks about the new Rokakaka. And I believe it's audible because Suruki can hear what's being said. Um, so if someone else was in the room, they would hear exactly what was just said and what was just asked. Just saying. So one person, Tsurugi, went and did everything she can or he can to get Isuho out of there but unfortunately it appears that someone else is in the room and we get someone grabbing a phone that is currently meshed with Paisley Park as we know now Paisley Park cannot move unless it's through technology um and we get this moment where I think this is Sarugi this is a sideways shot but it's kind of uh, turned like 280, 190 degrees, uh, somewhere between that range. So it looks kind of upside down. Paisley Park is trapped. Again, I don't see why Paisley Park couldn't move into the computer at this moment. That's what I was thinking. Uh, but we're getting this POV through Paisley Park's eyes, which I just realized to myself. I don't know why she couldn't jump from one of these computers. Maybe because she was surprised, but uh, very quickly the person holding the stand moves over it um, and throws her into what appears to be water. Um, I'm just thinking about this. I don't know how much damage uh, Yasuho takes from the stand because you would think that a technology being thrown into water would cause an electric shock. And it appears that maybe that phone isn't on, so maybe that's why it's not shocking her death right now. But, uh, yeah, we get the return of Jobin Higashikata, the uh, penultimate villain, as I said. Jobin was obviously was watching over Tsurugi. I don't know if it necessarily was because he was looking for her. But, um, he, he did what he had to do. And, uh, yeah, he, um, threw her into the uh, toilet of Abyss. And I believe it was the second or third time now he's beating the dog mess out of, uh, uh, old girl, uh, Yasuho, and she is once again falling to the victim of, of Jobin. I'm not sure she's gonna get out of this one. Uh, technology, this is a plug right here, so maybe she could jump into there. This is a radio right here, so maybe she could jump into that. Uh, this weighs out, I suppose, but the only problem is that Jobin is staring directly at her while she is going down the drain or drowning. Maybe that's his only intention is to drown because we have the blub, 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 kanji. So maybe that's his only intention is to drown her and make sure she's gone. Uh, this part is very interesting. I don't know what this kind of is. I'm guessing because the phone is disconnected. Um, maybe because the phone is disconnected from the stand. Uh, Paisley Park doesn't have a um, corporeal existence. So with her remnants uh, washing away without having a vessel, it also is washing away Yasuho. That's my best guess. And uh, please forgive me, big sis. We can't let anyone find out. Yeah, Sarugi, you know, doing her best to... Doing his best to kind of rationalize everything that's happening. And uh, that's about it. Uh, I think Jobin is going to get his... Um, I don't think he's necessarily the villain. I think he's like an anti-hero. Maybe villain. Maybe like tertiary, secondary villain. But I don't think he's necessarily evil. Uh, but I do think he will get his. I believe he will be very responsible in whatever upsets Josuke enough to have Josuke beat his ass. Because we're definitely getting Josuke against Jobin at some point. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Jobin ended up killing uh, Mamazuku, for example. Because Mamazuku is definitely going to have a part in this towards the end. And uh, Mamazuku will be needed to, to, you know, cultivate the branch and all that as well. So we're definitely going to have him. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if he usually uses... Um, plot development to make uh, Josuke mad enough to, to do something because 
if Yosuke be, or Yasuho being embarrassed and beaten down by Jogan repeatedly wasn't enough for Josuke to just face him straight up then. Hey. But that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.